Good morning, church. I want you to turn to someone that is nearby you and just acknowledge them and say good morning. Even if it's a nod, say hi, how you going? It's good to see you today. Just want to welcome everyone here today and also welcome to those who are on our live stream this morning. Wherever you are in the world, we just want to welcome you to church today. My name is Raymo Ang and I'll be your host this morning. And just before we kick things off and before we get the band coming up, singing some songs and worship, there's just a few things that I wanted to share with you guys this morning uh, and some things that we need to know because it's a big service. And so I don't want anyone to miss out on um, the blessings for today. If you had walked in today to church, you would have seen one of these booklets sort of floating around. If you haven't received one already, um, this is a super cool book. Um, basically on the front it says, we are a college church. And we truly believe that that's part of philosophy and a value that we have here at church is that we belong to this church, you belong to this church. And in this book, it covers everything that we need to know about this church. Obviously you can speak to our pastors and some of our first impression teams, but a lot of our core values and beliefs are in this book. And part of the theme for our entire year at church is Hero Maker. As you can see, the big letters in the back here, and that's something that we value here at this church is discipling not only our young people, but everyone to be involved to do His work. So in this book, you'll, uh, you'll find all sorts of information. You'll find dates, you'll find events, things. So it's a great book, and the team have spent countless time preparing this just for you guys. And also, there's some space here where you can journal, you can write things down if you want, if you, if you, if you take something from the uh, from the messages and from today's service as well. Hey, look, today's such an exciting day, particularly because we are celebrating communion. Communion Day is such a special day. And, and in fact, you'll find it in, 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 in the pages of this book. I think it's on page 24 or 25. You'll also see an explanation of what communion is about. What makes communion very special is that we also participate in the washing of feet. This may be something that's fairly odd or maybe a surprise for, for those who are visiting us for the first time. But this is just a great opportunity uh, for us to live out Jesus' example. And this is not something that we force onto people, but it's something that we'd like to highlight and say, hey, as part of a community, we do this to celebrate God, but more so Jesus as an act of service and humility. Today we'll be hearing from Pastor Michaela, who will also be sharing more light on what communion is and how that impacts us and what that means for us as we move out from this place. If you're visiting us for the first time, just know that we'll be here for about an hour and 15 minutes. But once we are done, we just want to let you know that you are safe and you are, uh, that you belong here. And we just want to make sure that uh, your experience here is something that you'll remember for a long time and hopefully keeps you coming back. Another way that you can get connected with us is also seeing our team at the foyer at the front. They'll also give you a book if you don't have one already, uh, but more so some of our first impression team, but also our, our pastoral team as well. Um, but as a way of connection, um, I know that many of us are coming in here going, this is hot. I don't want to connect with anyone. I just want to stand still. That's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out by, by feeling a little bit more cooler. I know you're sitting on your seat. You're all feeling sweaty and all, but I just need you to stand right now. So stand on your feet. Stand on your feet, all right? Now, I need you to make some space between you and the person next to you because you don't want to be standing next to them for a very long time. It's going to be hot and bother. Good. Standing, standing, standing on our feet. Good, good. All right. So wherever you are, whether you're, if you see someone standing by themselves, I want you to go and just say hi and just acknowledge them and say, hey, it's good to see you today. Whether it be the person next to you, you walked in with that person, still say hi to them. It's super important that we acknowledge one another here at church. Awesome. So let's continue our connection, not only through saying hi to someone today, but also connecting to God through worship and praise. Good morning, church. Let's worship. Let's, let's continue standing and let's praise our God. Sing overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, but I won't break through the bad, and I will say, Your grace will be enough. Your grace will be enough. Under fire, but we won't fall. We will never be alone. 
You'll always be enough. You'll always be enough. Now in God we trust. In His name we hope. I know God will not be shaken. God is. Follow. We will follow where you go. We will trust through the unknown. I know you go before. I know you go before. Leave our heart now in your ways. For we're carrying your name. Your promise never fails. Your promise never fails. Now in God we trust. What you've begun Forever strong in Sing about the passion of our Savior. Let's sing.
lift our praises. Come on. I give my whole life to honor this love by the Lamb who was slain. I'm forgiven the sinner's Savior. Crown Him forever for the Lamb who was slain. He is risen. standing as I pray. Father, thank you so much for being in this place already. Thank you for what you're about to do. We just invite you into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, Lord, as we praise your name, as we worship you in every single aspect of this program, Lord. Help us to remember that it's all about you, and please remember that it's all about you, Lord. We just invite your presence here. We thank you so much for what you've done in our lives for this week. Um, just thank you so much for all the blessings. Um, thank you for bringing us through all the hurt and the pain if it's been this week, Lord. I know there's a lot of different experiences that people have had this week, and I just ask that, and thank you so much for being with those people and bringing them here today. Help your spirit to be with every single person here. As we praise your name here, as we listen, as we learn, as we notice how great you are and how glorious you are, Lord. Just thank you so, so much for everything you've done in our lives and be with us as we continue on our journey, Lord. We ask all these things in your powerful name, amen. Guys, thank you so much for worshiping. You can take a seat. Once again, we just wanna welcome everyone who's just joined us, has just walked in. We are so excited that you guys are here. And so we just have a few announcements that I just wanna share with you this morning before we uh, kick off with the rest of the program. Starting next week, we have a brand new series called The Missing Part of the Gospel. And this will be launched by none other than our pastor, Michaela. Uh, she'll be la launching the first one of the series. And then the following three will be also led out by Pastor Nimrod. Um, this is such an exciting series. And again, we just want to invite you to come, be encouraged, be challenged, but also invite someone that you think would, that you would love to be here as well. There's nothing more exciting for us here at College Church than to journey together, uh, particularly in this sermon series. So we look forward to you inviting someone as well. Uh, the second thing uh, that we would love to encourage you guys, one thing that we value here at College Church is community, it's family, it's belonging here. And part of that is not, we, we don't just value community, but we also value deep and meaningful relationships. What does that look like? Well, for us, church is not just something that happens on a Saturday morning. We come get our quick little fix and we go off again. It's more than just saying hi, bye to someone as you're on your way in or on your way out. It's more than just a handshake. Hey, how you going? Good. Have a good day at church and walk away. We truly value deep and meaningful relationships as a church. And one of the ways that we can get engaged or be connected with each other is through life life groups. And this has been such a pivotal point for our church, especially our leaders, our pastoral team that has this vision of saying, hey, we want everyone to be connected through a life group. There are many ways that we can be connected through these different types of life groups. And it's something that we know that will continue to enhance our relationship, not only with each other, but also with God as well. So there are plenty of uh, life groups that are gonna be kicking off in a few weeks time. In fact, March 2, March 2, that's the date, that's five weeks away. I know some of you are so excited that you wanna start your life group. And some of you are probably already in a life group, which is amazing. But March 2, we're gonna set up a life group expo in the foyer in the back there. So if you are interested in joining one or possibly even leading one. Keep that in mind as, uh, as we go towards March 2. Sign up and we love every single one of you to be connected. Again, there's so many life groups. I know there's a running group, which I, I used to be a part of. Where's Anthony? Is he here? 
Yes, I always usually get a, a text message. Um, there's a cooking group. Uh, I know that there's a hiking group. There's, a, there's even a martial arts group. I mean, there's all sorts of groups. So if you are interested in joining any one of these, please uh, keep that in mind. March 2 is what it is, is the date we're going to set up our expo. And we'd love for you to be involved, but also lead out if you're really interested as well. Another particular date, this is on Saturday afternoon. I think it's February 16. Uh, at 1.30, uh, just across uh, the, the church, there's an Ella Hughes Chapel. All our ministry teams and our team leaders are going to be meeting with our pastoral team to see and plan out what they, this year is going to be about. Obviously, we have a great group of volunteers and team, team leaders in our church that do the behind the scene work, whether it be the Sabbath school, whether it be the hospitality, whether it be volunteers. We're going to sit down and have a heart-to-heart -heart chat about what this year looks like, but also talk about some of the challenges or the roadblocks, because let's be realistic. There are going to be some stuff this year that you're going to be scratching your head going, I don't know if it's going to work, or maybe we tried it before. But our pastoral team would love to collaborate with all our team ministry leaders and find out the best possible way that we can partner together to make this year such a memorable one. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, today's a special day because we are celebrating and remembering communion. And part of the communion practice is something that's an ancient practice that we've kept and something that we do every single time we have communion is the foot washing. Now, foot washing may be a bit strange to some for those who are joining us for the first time, but this is a practice that was taking place many, many years ago in Scripture. And in John chapter 13, Jesus demonstrates this to his disciples by stooping low and washing their feet as an act of humility and service and love for his disciples. And in fact, in John chapter 13, he encourages us. He says, hey, if you want to be my follower, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to be someone that shares my characteristics, my traits, my core values and beliefs, I also invite you to do the same as well. So right now we have a great opportunity for you to participate in this foot washing. You'll see up on the screen, there's gonna be a map to, see, uh, to show you where to go. Obviously, the, uh, most of our uh, washrooms are just gonna be on, the, on, on, on this side, on your right of the, uh, of the church building. But we're gonna have the ladies. Uh, you guys are gonna be in the junior Sabbath school room, which is out in the foyer, and then you can sort of walk down this, uh, this corridor down here, as well as the men. You're gonna be in that room is, uh, right next door. You'll see some of our first impressions team those with the t-shirts or those with the lanyard they'll be happy to, to direct you but also about that we also love to encourage our families I know this is something that I really enjoy doing communion and foot washing with my kids and actually coaching them and mentoring them through this is why it's important this is what it looks like to serve someone to love someone and so there's opportunity for families if you have a young family please we invite you to go out into the family room just down here on the left as well but also we have up here on the mezzanine so if you just go up these stairs on the side there'll be be a group of people waiting for you guys and that'll be for couples and friends now look for those who are visiting us for the first time this may be odd and you may feel like you you know you're obligated to go you don't have to you don't have to we're just so glad that you're here seriously but here's here's one thing if if you want to know what it's about if you're just interested in going why, why are they washing each other's feet it's so weird my feet are hot and bothered I don't want anyone touching my feet if you just want to observe and come check it out we encourage you to also join us as well so, without further ado, I'm just going to invite all of us, for those who want to participate in our foot washing, now's the opportunity for you, for us all, to move out to these designated areas. We're going to take roughly about 15 minutes, and if you feel comfortable and you, and you don't want to be involved, that's also all right. Um, you can just stay seated where you are, and then we'll kick off in the program in 15 minutes' time. So, if you can just make your way now uh, to our designated areas, you can go out to the foyer, look out for our first impressions teams, and they will direct you to where you need to go. Thank you again, guys.
Let's continue worshiping, guys. Let's stand.
sing when I was your foe. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. God sent his son. God sent his son. You know it. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He bled and died to buy my part. Savior lives because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I
to hold our newborn baby and feel the sing I'll cross that river I'll find life's love no war with me and then as death gives way to In 2013, I took a group of about 23 uh, young people from South New Zealand Christchurch to one of our big camps in the South Pacific Division. Um, it was a quite of a memorable experience, simply because uh, it wasn't just one of those events where you say, well, let's just go and have a bit of fun. But there was purpose to this camp. And we realized that people from all over the South Pacific, young people all over the South Pacific, from Tonga to Samoa, to New Way, to Tahiti, all over Australia and all over New Zealand converged to this one particular place, Watson Park in Brisbane. And I was leading out this group of young, uh, 23, uh, 23 young people. The theme of that camp arena, for those who, who do remember, and for some of our uni students, you, you probably were there as well, was this. It was the World Changes Youth Congress. And it was at this Congress that I remember that our South Pacific Division uh, leader, Nick Cross, had a vision and he said, look, we want to put Bibles in the hands of our young people, but not just an ordinary Bible. We, we want this Bible to have resources. We want this Bible to be a tool where they can Bible study amongst each other, tools to witness. It has every single gem. If you haven't seen these Bibles, these are the ones that we use here at College Church. And these Bibles have been so valuable not to not only our church, but also every single young person in the South Pacific. I remember at, that, at the end of that campery, we stood there on the final night and we made this altar call. And we said, we challenged everyone there. We said, look, if you are wanting to be a world changer in this world, we have to take this seriously. We're going to put more Bibles in the hands of our young people. More, more young people today are thirsty for the Word of God. 
And so today's offering is directly towards that. You have a, a perfect opportunity to contribute that. It's directly towards the South Pacific Division Youth Ministry. Specifically, you'll be aiding in terms of providing resources similar to this, but also other resources that your youth directors, local youth leaders are using all throughout the South Pacific Division. We truly believe that we are called to sort of further the work of God by not only placing Bibles, but also equipping the next generation of our young people in our church, but also in our community. If this is your first time and you're visiting us for the first time, uh, please don't feel obliged to give. But if you feel that, you, that you've come here prepared to give, but you feel impressed, we invite you, please give. And there are two ways that you can do it. There's a, there'll be some volunteers who'll come with the baskets and you can place your money in there. But also, you can also access the app, but also online as well on our e-giving. And again, we just wanna invite you just to partner with us as we uh, help our young people from all over the South Pacific gain access to resources such as our Bibles, but also other resources that will also further His kingdom. I'm just gonna invite our volunteers now to come to the front and they'll collect our offering for the morning. Good morning, everyone. How's it going on this sweltering Sabbath day? <laughs> um, if you don't know me, my name's Michaela, and um, I am the kids' pastor at this church now, which is super exciting. Oh, thank, thank you. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, it's my third week in. I've just finished it, and um, I can say that I'm a professional painter. If you've noticed, there's a bit of painting been going on outside, and that's a lot of what I've been doing lately, but I'm super excited to get into the rest of the year with you guys. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> Sorry, awkward silence. Let's just move on from that. Um, ooh, let me get my notes sorted. Okay, so if you caught Alex's message a few weeks ago, he was talking about being a bit of a rule breaker, a bit of a, a bit of a, um, you know, testing the rules. And so I also want to test the rules today. And the way I'm going to test the rules is by inviting all of the kids up to join me for the sermon. So if you're a kid, can you please come up here with me? And we're going to discuss something super special about today. And we're going to discuss it together. So come on up. Hey guys, how are you going? Good? That's so good. Oh, 
All right, everyone grab a seat. It's so great to have you here. Whew, that makes me feel a lot more at ease having all my friends up here with me. So grab a seat if you like. We're, gonna, we're just going to hang out for a little minute. Have a seat. Cool. All right. So in just a few seconds, we're going to have a picture come up on the screen, all right? And everyone here, I want you to, in just a minute, not yet, Brandon, <laughs> um, we're going to have a picture come up, and there's a few random things in this picture. I want you to look at the picture and remember every single thing that's in the picture and keep that in your mind, okay? All right, ready, spaghetti, go. And off. All right. Has everyone got everything that's in the picture? Does everyone remember it? Keep it in your mind. All right. So what do we think about memory? Would you guys think you have a bit of a bad memory? Who thinks they have a bad memory? You guys are pretty young. Your memories are probably pretty good. You think you have a bad memory? Okay. How about out here? Who thinks they have a bad memory? Oh, quite a few hands go up. Okay. So when I was your age, I had a pretty bad memory. And my mum would tell me to unstack the dishwasher while she was at work. And I would completely forget because I would get distracted by all the fun things I had to do. Or she'd tell me to take the washing off the line. And then, anyway, she'd get home from work and it started raining and there's the washing on the line. And oopsie daisy, I forgot. Does anyone forget things that their parents tell them to do? I think sometimes it's a bit of selective forgetfulness. Yeah. Okay. So that was me we have a bit of a hard time remembering things. We can be pretty forgetful. All right, so the pictures we just had up on the screen, can someone tell me all of the things that were on it? Do you think you can, Rosie? No? Can you remember three things that were on it? No? Nah? Oh, okay. Can anyone else in the audience tell me all of the things that are on the picture? No, because it was too quick, and we, we struggle to remember the things that don't really matter much to us, don't we? Because in that picture, you saw some things, they were there, but they didn't really mean anything, did they? No. But the problem is, we also sometimes forget things that we're supposed to remember, things that are special to us. Like, has anyone ever forgotten a birthday? Has anyone forgotten their mum's or dad's birthday? How about... Husbands and wives out here, has anyone ever forgotten an anniversary? Have you ended up in the doghouse? I'm glad that's not one of the stresses on my mind at the moment. I don't have to remember anniversaries, it's just birthdays. Oh, anyway, so I'm going to tell you a story about a time that I forgot someone's birthday. But first of all, I'm going to say that my grandparents, they're out in the audience today. And when I was younger, about your age, they were missionaries. Does anyone know what a missionary is? Yeah? So it's someone who like works overseas with people and helps them. So my grandparents were missionaries and they lived overseas. Hello, how are you? Good? That's good. <laughs> and so my grandparents were missionaries. And so they were gone much of my childhood. But when I was eight, they decided to move back to Australia. And they didn't just move back to Australia, they moved out the back of my house. So we had a bit of a big you know, piece of land, and so it was my house. And then they built their house on the empty block of land out the back. And then my granddad put a path between the two houses. So I spent the whole rest of my childhood bouncing between the two houses, and it was heaps of fun because I could just go to grandma's house when I didn't like what mum was cooking. And I'd just say, hey, grandma, can I have some food? And she'd feed me, and she wouldn't ask any questions, and it was a perfect system. So that is how I lived my life. And I had lots of sleepovers, and it was just a wonderful time. But then I got a bit older, so maybe some of you might have older siblings or you might know some people who are in high school. Does anyone know who, anyone who's in high school? Your two brothers, Faith? Yep. Okay, so I was just finished high school at the end of HSC. And I don't know if the adults in the room can like relate, but you know that week between Christmas and New Year's when everything's a bit of a muddle and there's Christmas leftovers floating all around your head and you keep eating too much. You don't know what day or time or week it is and you're just kind of like, oh, what am I doing with my life? So that was kind of like me for a whole month because it was the end of HSC, it was before college started, I'd gone to America and I'd come back so I was really jet lagged 
and I just didn't quite know what was going on. Anyway, it got to February 11, 2015. I woke up this morning. My mum's a nurse, so she'd already gone to bed, to, to work, sorry, not to bed. My mum had already gone to work, and my sister had gone to school. My older siblings were out living their best lives. I don't know where they were. They were somewhere else. And I was home alone, and I woke up, and I was super hungry. And I remembered grandma having honey wheats in her cupboard. Does anyone love honey wheats? Do we know what honey wheats are? Is that too old? You love honey wheats? Thank goodness. They're the best thing ever. Anyway, so I raced up to grandma's house. I opened the cupboard, got the honey wheats, got the milk, plonked down on her couch and started watching the Sunrise News Show. You know that show? I started watching the Sunrise News Show with her. And all the time, she doesn't give me any hints that it's her birthday. And I'm just sitting there on this couch, living my life, eating breakfast, not saying anything to her. And it wasn't until like heaps later that like grandma got up and she went to have a shower and I was like, cool, that's great, be clean. I didn't realize she was like getting ready to go out for lunch and granddad came and told me, he goes, oh, I'm gonna take grandma out to lunch for her birthday, it's gonna be so nice. And I was like, oh, what, it's her birthday? And I'd completely forgotten. Now my grandma and I are pretty good friends and if you don't know my grandma, you should probably be best friends with her because she's pretty amazing. So you think that I would remember. And for me, birthdays are the best thing ever. Who loves birthdays? Anyone out here? You love birthdays? Yeah, yeah. I love celebrating birthdays. I love making someone a cake, and I love organizing them a birthday party. And I love just making a big crazy to-do over someone's birthday. But this time I forgot, and I was so embarrassed. Anyway, Grandma went to lunch with Granddad. I raced back down the path to my mum's house, and I started making, making this dinner for her. Because I was like, if I can just make her a dinner, I'll pretend that it was a surprise, and that will cover up the fact that I forgot her birthday. Anyway, mum got home from work, and she was like, oh, I was planning to cook her dinner all along, so lol, thanks for getting a start on that. Anyway, so we got a start on the dinner, and grandma walked in, we set the table, everyone was there, and I yelled out, surprise! And she was like, uh, thanks. And I was like, oh. So grandma knew that I'd forgotten, but anyway, we ended up having a really good party, and we didn't talk about that I forgot her birthday until now. Sorry, grandma, I love you, you're the best. Okay, so... Now, it's so human to be forgetful. Do you think, like I just told you, I forgot my grandma's birthday, you guys can forget to fold your washing, you can forget to bring your lunch to school. Has anyone forgotten to bring their lunch to school before? Yeah, has your mum had to bring it to school? Or did you just spend the whole day hungry? Oh, I've done both of those before, and I had a really nice friend who shared her lunch with me, and that was fabulous. Anyway, so that's why for many, many years, People have been inventing ways to remember things. So can I have three volunteers? Three volunteers. Oh, Troy. Yes, I'm so good at this. Okay, Troy, <laughs> do you want to come up? Um, and Faith, and are you Sienna? Oh, yes, this is so good. Okay, we're going to be best friends. It's going to be great. Okay, so Faith, I'm going to give you this piece of string. Troy, I'm going to give you my post-it notes, and Sienna, I'm going to give you my phone. Okay, so people have been using all kinds of things to remember things. So before they had post-it notes and before they had phones, how do you think they used a piece of string to remember something? Do you have any idea? Should we ask an older person from the congregation? Okay. Can someone call out what we use piece of strings for? Tie it around your finger. I knew the old people would get it. Okay. So they used to tie it around their finger, and then every time you looked at the string around your finger, you'd be like, oh, I have to go to the shop and buy some milk, or I have to go fix the tire on the car or something. So that's how that worked, yeah? All right, Troy. How do you think people use post-it notes to remember things? Uh, um, like, like I, I need to remember. An ear appointment. <laughs> I, I, I need to go to the dentist. Oh, he needs to go to the dentist. <laughs> oh, no, I forgot. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. That was a very good demonstration. <laughs> yeah, so this is my, my post-it notes from my desk. 
and it's got all of my notes that I have to do. You write down the notes. I don't often stick them to my head, but hey, if that's going to help you remember something, is that going to help you remember your ear appointment, then go your, go your fabulous best. Okay, now, Sienna, how can we use phones? I'm going to jump over here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. How are we going to use phones to remember things? You could write it down on here. Yeah, you can write it down. Now, if I put my thumbprint in here, can you find my calendar app? Can you see it? And can you read what I've got at 2 p.m. today, or oh, 1.30 today? Hey, steps for lunch at Grandma's house. Thank you very much. I can't forget that I have haystacks for lunch at Grandma's house because it's just amazing. Haystacks are the best. All right. Thank you guys so much. You can all have a seat. You guys are great helpers. Now, I want to know, what did those three things have in common? Did they help us remember things? Remembering. Good job, Rosie. So they're all reminders. They're reminders of things. Now, Oh gosh, how do people do this? Sorry. Mm. Okay. Today, we're focusing on a very, very special reminder. Does anyone know what that reminder is? Anyone know what it's called? Yeah? Um, um, I don't know. <laughs> That's all right. We're going to find out in just a minute what that special reminder is. So... Jesus created a special reminder for us called communion. Now, if you want to follow along with us, we're going to go to page 847 of the White Bibles, and we're going to look at Luke 22. Luke. Luke 22, verse 14. Now, is everyone, everyone listening? Yeah? Because you guys don't have your Bibles with you, so you'll just have to listen. Is that cool? Yeah? No worries. All right. So, when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, this is my body I have given you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, do you mind grabbing that over there for me, please? Um, do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? Someone, just grab that for me. Okay. So, in just a minute, you're all going to go back to your seats, and you're going to be given, there's going to be trays, do you mind holding that for me, Troy? There's going to be trays of bread coming around like this, and there's going to be little cups of juice like this. Well, a bit different to this. And you can ask your parents if you can join them, and they can help you in the reminder, because the reminder that this means is that... Jesus told his disciples one day. He got them together. Does anyone know why Jesus got his disciples together at something called the Passover feast? Yeah, Rosie? For lunch? Hey, maybe it was for lunch. That was pretty good. Jesus gathered his disciples because he was about to die on the cross. Does anyone know why Jesus had to die on the cross? No. Yeah? To wash our sins away wash our sins away. That's an amazing answer. So Jesus had to die on the cross to wash our sins away, yeah? And, the re and so he was going to the cross. But before he went to the cross, he didn't want his disciples to forget the meaning of this sacrifice. Because Jesus had to die for us. But he, didn't, he wanted them to remember it over and over again. Because if we forgot, if the disciples didn't remember it, would we remember it now today? because it had to be carried on and carried on and carried on and carried on, right? And that's why we still do it today. So he got the bread over there that we saw Troy have. We got the bread and we got the wine and he said, do this in remembrance of me. 
Jesus knows that as humans, we're forgetful. He knew that we would need frequent reminders of this gift. And that's why we celebrate communion together. It's a way of remembering him and the fact that he died on the cross for us. When Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me, he took the two traditional parts of the Passover feast, a feast that they had all the time. He took the bread and he took the wine and he gave it a depth and a meaning that it never had before. He gave it the meaning of his blood and he gave it the meaning of his body. His purpose was that the, the bread and wine would be a continual physical reminder of the amazing gift that he gave us by dying on the cross. So today, my, my big idea is simple and very direct. It's remember. I want you to remember, just like we use post-it notes and strings and phones to remember things, I want you to look at the communion, and I want you to remember every single time that you see communion, that Jesus died for us, and he's forgiving us, and he's taking us to heaven with him one day. Is that cool? Yeah? All right. So you guys can go back to your seats. So for the adults... Remember, remember Christ as he directed his disciples during the Passover. Don't just slip into the familiarity of going through the communion motions. It's so easy to just partake of communion and not really grasp the complete reason why we're doing it. Draw upon Jesus in this moment and take the time to fully comprehend the gift that he gave us as he died on that cross. And now I'm gonna invite Alex up to lead us in communion. Thank you, Pastor Michaela. Hey, look, as, as um, Pastor Michaela just shared, we're going to, uh, this morning, uh, this afternoon, we're just going to remember and, and we're going to take some time to, to partake in the, the bread and the wine that, you know, as, as Jesus had instructed his disciples and his followers to do. And so what I'm going to do right now is just invite each person who feels comfortable, who is um, who is wanting to to participate in this, to to take a piece of bread and a and a cup of grape juice, and as you do that, I just want to let you know that we're going to have uh, an elder, one of our church elders down here, uh, in that aisle, one in the middle aisle, and one in this aisle as well, and up the top as well, just at each door. Uh, up the up the top on the balcony, you can you can find it up there as well. So what we're going to do to keep it nice and orderly is we if you can whatever aisle you're going down, please if you can walk down the left. So let's just pretend we're driving. If we can walk down the left, and then when you turn around and go back to your seat, you can go down on the left as well. So the opposite side. So I'm going to just invite uh, invite you to to come forward or up the top and collect your bread and grape juice now. Thank you. If, when you collect it, if you could bring it back to your seat and we're gonna, we're just gonna share a little bit together. Um, I'm just gonna speak for a bit and then we're gonna, uh, engage in this tradition together. Thank you. Just one more announcement, just uh, just on this side to the left of me, if you're gluten-free, we have some gluten-free bread for you to take there. So that's just down here. If you make your way down this line, we can get that sorted for you.
So as Pastor Michaela shared earlier, Jesus and his disciples were were sitting around and and they they were at this feast of the Passover. And the Bible says that as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And so today we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, his body broken for us. So that as one of the children set up here, he can wash away our sins. And so today I'm gonna to, I'm gonna invite you to partake of the bread that you collected and to um just to eat it and as you as you eat it, remember what Jesus did for you in that moment. And the Bible says in Matthew 26, verse 27, And he, meaning Jesus, took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, Each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And so today, with these little cups that you've that you've come in and received, I'm going to invite you to drink from this. And as you drink from this, to remember the sac- again, remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, and and that is, He was willing to die for our sin. His blood spilt. It was a horrific, shameful death. And so right now, we're just going to remember. And as we drink this, we're just remembering that sacrifice. And so I invite you, College Church to drink and remember. Church, I would love if you would pray with me. God, we just thank you so much for your sacrifice. We thank you so much for what you did on that cross 2,000 years ago. And may we never forget this, Lord. May we always remember the lengths that you had to go to in order that we can spend eternity with you. I mean, what a gift. And so right now, Lord, we're just remembering this sacrifice. We're remembering the pain that you went through, the blood that you shed all for us, And we thank you, Lord. We're sitting here in awe and just ask, Lord, that that this can become real for us, that this can become something that we just, we don't just kind of go through the motions with, that, that this becomes something that we can remember each and every single day, each and every single hour and minute and second of our lives and forever be grateful for that. So Lord, today as we remember, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for what you've done. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Let's stand one more time today, church. Let's praise our God who has done so much for us. Let's remember Him. Let's sing. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see His wounds, His hands, His feet. Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. And they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance by heaven. Yes. 
out loud. She shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will. Sing it out, I praise the name. sacrifice, this crazy love that we can never imagine, Lord. I just thank you so, so much for everything that you've done for us, Lord. Be with us as we go. Help us to be able to find you in everything that we see, Lord. I ask these things in your name. Amen. You guys can take a seat. Have a look at the screen. We've got something to show you. To be a believer in Jesus and not a follower of Jesus? Is it possible to be a Christian and not a disciple of Jesus? Is it possible to separate belief from action? Bonhoeffer said, Christianity without discipleship is always Christianity without Christ. Dallas Willard, he adds, we have not only been saved by grace, we have been paralyzed by it. You see, the gospel we preach determines the disciples we make. And many preach a gospel that makes converts, but not disciples. So until we get the gospel right, we can't expect the state of discipleship to change. But focusing on the problem can get us tangled in a theological pretzel if we don't continue towards a solution. The missing part of the gospel sermon series leads us to a solution. That solution is Jesus. Reading and studying the gospel he taught determines how we should live as his disciples. In preparing for this sermon series, the Holy Spirit messed me up. And I have no doubts that the Holy Spirit will mess you up as well through this series. We are going to look at five mainstream gospels that have been preached and taught for so long to uncover the missing part of the gospel. So church family, this is starting February 2, which is next week. So we invite you, please come back, bring a friend if you have to, drag them along so we can share this experience of uncovering what the missing part of the gospel is. If you want to know more about our series also, you can find our awesome books that are in the foyer. Make sure you see our help desk team and they're more than willing to give you. These are for free. This is a gift. This is no gimmick or whatnot. There are also free pens. So that's also a bonus as well. So make sure you grab a copy on the way out if you haven't received one already. We truly believe uh, here at College Church that God has something unique to say, uh, something unique for you today. And we hope and our desire is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. So please continue to be connected with us, whether it be through our website, collegeinfo, collegechurch.info.com, uh, but also on Instagram and our Facebook. Um, and so today, we just want to thank you again for making the time and taking part of your weekend to spend with us today. So apart from that, God bless. Stay cool, stay hydrated. We'll see you again.